Ms. Thayer, you are here uh, today in hopes of saving what is left of your marriage. In doing so, you've summoned your husband, Mr. Thayer, to paternity court to prove that not only did he father your 19-month-old daughter, Cadence, but also your three-year-old son, Matthew Jr. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Thayer, you say you absolutely do not trust your wife and you are prepared to get a divorce today when the results reveal that either one or both kids are not yours. That's correct, Your Honor. So, Ms. Thayer, what is the current status of your relationship with your husband? We don't even have sex anymore. What married couple doesn't have sex? Um, we're young. It's the back and forth, arguing all the time. We argue so much that my son is starting to get mad and yell and repeat some of the stuff that we say. And I want to prove to him that these are his kids. I've done nothing wrong to him for him not to trust me and for him to say that these aren't his kids. And I have five kids total and he treats the three oldest kids better than he treats his own kids. And I don't feel like that's fair. Um, and I mean, this is the last resort. So this doubt is wreaking havoc in your marriage. Yeah, in my mind, uh, we're basically separated because we don't sleep in the same room no more. Uh, when, we're, when we're around each other, she's on her phone and we just sit in, the, sit in the same house and we don't even communicate no more. So I don't feel that connection with her or the, or the kids for that matter. And all of this is because of the doubts. Yes, Your Honor. With regard to the paternity of the two youngest children. Yes, Your Honor. I want to understand how this all started. When we first met, she told me that it was clear that she did not want a relationship. She just wanted friends with benefits. And I wanted the same thing. I didn't want, to, I didn't want a relationship at that time. Miss Thayer, what's this open thing? You do what you do, I do what we do. We, we in a relationship. What is that about? I've been in some really bad relationships to where I just didn't trust men. I even went through a phase where I started dating girls for a little while. So, so I what you're saying that. is this whole open thing that you agreed to was not because you wanted to have access and opportunity to sleep with other people. It was so that you didn't have to expect fidelity or expect him to not cheat. Yes, Your Honor. At some point, you find out you're pregnant. Yes. That is correct, Your Honor. And what happens from there? I didn't know what to say because I wasn't planning on having any more kids. I mean, I had three girls already, so I was already a single mom. Were you all using girls. protection? No. Well, then you were not. planning on having another baby. That is correct. <laughs> fail to plan. Plan to fail. And, I, and then I believe she so, was pregnant before we even got together because uh, Matthew was born three weeks early. And she told me about three weeks in that she was pregnant. So that's where that doubt comes in for him. So you felt like you met, you all were sleeping together, not using protection, but then when she came up pregnant, you thought it was a little too soon. Yes. And that's, that's after he was born that I started putting, putting those pieces together. You began doing the math. Yes. Ms. Thayer, I need to know from you, do you remember around which date you felt like you conceived? Matthew. I believe I conceived Matthew September 10th. And the reason that I feel that way is because that night he had a hotel party. And after his friends left, we stayed and we pretty much, we had sex about three or four times that night alone. I mean, he knows my conception date. It's, this is not new to him. So your conception date, you say, was around September 10th? Yes. All right, 2012. So if we calculate... The child should be born somewhere between June 2nd and June 9th. When was Matthew born? May 18th. Oh, so there's your doubt. Yes, ma'am. And look, babies do come early. So, but you claim she was with somebody else approximately three weeks before. Yeah. See, you're, you feel emotional because... It hurts. I mean, I love him or I wouldn't have married him. This is the person that I want to spend my life with. This is my first child too, Your Honor. I was excited because I, I didn't have no kids, I didn't have a family or anything, and she was gonna give that to me. And I wanted that. That's a, this is something that I really do want. I want a family of my own that I can grow with and I can watch them grow and I can teach them all the things that they're supposed to do in their life that I didn't do in mine. And so why do you doubt her so much? Just because of some of the things that she says when we do get in arguments, she brings up the fact that she would sleep with somebody else. That's like puts a big, big <laughs> seed in, in my head thinking that She's gonna go do that. And I work 11 hour days. So there's plenty of time during the day for her to put the kids down to sleep and go mess with somebody, clean up, and then I come home and give her a kiss like I normally do when I come home. 
So because of these trust issues, you've asked the court to administer a lie detector test. Yes. We did, in fact, do that, and I will have those results for you in just a bit. Thank you. All right. I'd like to go to your doubts surrounding Cadence. That is your younger child. You all have two children together, potentially. Yeah, because around the time that, that she was conceived, uh, we weren't really having sex. You find out she's pregnant again, and immediately doubt. Yes. How are we going to have a kid if we don't have sex? So you testified earlier, Ms. Thayer, that you were in a sexless marriage. Yeah. Yes. I mean, when he's talking about with Cadence, I uprooted my whole life for him. So for me to uproot my whole life and do all of this stuff for him, and then for him to turn around and say stuff like, I have doubts, I don't think that these are... I'm only around you. I'm not around anybody else. I don't see why you would think I would waste my time But I don't know move. that, Your Honor. That I'm, not, I'm not so certain that she's only with me because I'm not there all day, every day with we her. We lived with but his But what family. he was saying is during that trip, he claims you weren't intimate. We were. We were at least four times. We were... In, in the house that we were staying in, it was, it was my aunt's house in Mexico. So it was almost impossible for us to be intimate. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. When you talk about your lack of trust, it's real. I can see it in your eyes. You really don't trust her. Yes. What in the world has gotten you to the point well, where I, you can't trust this woman? I've seen text messages uh, between her and somebody else, old times they spent together and how much fun they had. It just leads me to one thought and she's talking to another man. He doesn't understand. I wouldn't have married him. I wouldn't... I've been in so many relationships throughout my life that I chose him to marry. This is the person that I chose to marry. This is the person and that I chose, chose you to too. my life like, you with. You weren't the only one. Like. So, and... But not as much as I've caught him in his phone. We were having sex one night and he rolls over. We haven't even put our clothes on yet. And he's texting another woman. He loves her. So, you've never seen me Text, I love you to anyone else. This was after the, that after I seen the messages that she was sending. So when I seen that she, would, that, that she, wasn't, that she wasn't all the way faithful with me, of course I'm not going to be all the way faithful with somebody else. And He's just so started unlocking his phone since we got married. He just started unlocking his phone. His phone has been That's locked our true. whole relationship until around the time, about a month and a half before we got married, then he unlocks his phone. That's I knew how true. to get in his phone, but his phone stayed locked. <laughs> it stayed locked. My phone did not Well, have now you know. She knows how to get in your phone. Mr. Thayer, I, I, you know, <laughs> as I listen to this testimony, do you think this is insecurity or infidelity? Because they're two different things. The, the arguments that we had when uh, she was first pregnant with Matthew, uh, about a month into the pregnancy, is when she saw those messages and, and we did actually separate for about three months. Have you ever been cheated on in the past? Yes, I have. Okay. Because I, I, I lost trust in, in all women as far as relationships go. But that's not my fault, though. So that's like me saying I've been in a bunch yeah, of relationships. But the things that you say when we get in arguments, though, that's, that's, that's what I'm talking about. It is and I get petty sometimes. I absolutely do. But a lot of the stuff that you've done, what you need to realize, a lot of the stuff that you've done has hurt me a lot. And I'm tired of being hurt. I'm tired of walking on eggshells. I'm tired of being miserable. It's not fair. It's not fair not to my daughter. This, it's not fair to our son. It's not fair at all. I wouldn't have named your son after you. I wouldn't have gave you a junior if I, I'm a thousand percent sure that these are your kids. And that's why I'm here, so I can, so I can find that out for sure. Miss Thayer, you were in court today saying you have never cheated cheated on your husband. I have never cheated on him. The only time that I've ever messed with anybody else is the break that he's talking about because what happened was when I saw that text in his phone that I told you about, I asked him about it. He shrugged his shoulders like it didn't matter. And that's all that I got out of him. I didn't get a why. I asked him why he was doing it. Do you not want to be together? Like, what? what is the issue? I did because tell you I've been argument. a single mom for so long that I'm not trying to go into another relationship and then just be like, oh, well, I'm going to be a single mom again. That's not what I want. He's attached to my other kids. And that's why these DNA results mean so much. Because it's not just about Matthew and Cadence. Yeah. This is not boyfriend and girlfriend. We took vows to be together. And that's, I'm going to stand by those. I'm going to stand by those. These are his kids. And, I mean, Mr. and this is going to make or break us. Because you're prepared, Mr. Thayer, that you are going to leave if these children are not yours. Yes, Your Honor. I'm supporting three of the kids that aren't mine. And I don't want to feel played in this situation to where I'm supporting the whole household and nobody's related to me. Nobody's, a, nobody's my seed and to carry on my, my legacy. So... All right, I we're going to get it. to the DNA results in just a moment. But first, I want to get to the lie detector. So we did, in fact, um, 
have her meet with a licensed polygraph expert. Let me have those lie detector results, yes, please. Yes, Judge. Thank you. Now, Ms. Thayer, I have to ask you, is there anything you'd like to tell us before I read these results? Like I said, the only people that I messed with was during the break that we had that he's talking about where I moved out. Okay. Ms. Thayer, you were asked, in the last four years, have you had sexual contact with anyone other than the two men you have previously disclosed? You said no. The lie detector determined you were being deceptive. Question number two, since the first time you had sex with Matthew Sr., have you had sexual intercourse with anyone other than him since then? You said no. The lie detector determined you were being deceptive. <laughs> Mr. Thayer? You just gave me my answers. So that just puts more... In fact, more doubt in my mind that these kids aren't mine. Because Matthew doesn't look anything like me, neither does Cadence. They look just like you. Everything, no. the chin, the cheeks, the shape of the face, everything. Well, obviously you're lying, so we can't believe you. <laughs> so. Wow. <laughs> so, Miss Thayer, this is difficult. Now, you pretty much failed both questions in the, on the lie detector test. And that's why you're here in court today. I understand. You heard the phrase, the truth shall set you free. I'm going to ask you to free yourself and tell the truth. What is the truth? Because I've, I could see that smirk on your face. I've never cheated on him, but like I said, during the break, it may have been more than two people. But I've never cheated on him. Like, I've never cheated on him while we were together. She's lying so, about that. What else is she lying about? The two... Okay. So this is going way beyond. I see your body language. I sit in this bench day after day, and I know when people aren't being fully honest. It's all over you. I see that too, Is Your there Honor. anything it's the else thousand. you need to say? I mean, I've done stuff to hurt him because he hurt me, and in the end, I'm only hurting them. And that's it. So, I mean, right now, it's not about me. It's not about my feelings. It's not about us. It's about our kids. And I need him to know that these are his kids. And the last four years of my life weren't just wasted. So, as you talk about doing things to hurt him because you felt hurt, do you really know who both of these children, who their father is? I am a thousand percent sure that they are his kids. And we've heard that a thousand times, too. <laughs> so, we know that the kids looking like me it's not always it's not always 100% accurate and then when people say they're 1000% sure it it always goes left at the end of the day if they're not mine i'm not going to be with somebody i can't trust and hopefully this fixes it cuz i do have feelings for her your honor and i've spent like the last 4 years of my life I've, I've lost my family behind her uh cuz they don't approve of her having multiple kids they don't approve of my color my skin color it's not i've been harassed in my inbox on facebook i've been harassed face to face by his family about the color of my skin. And I've, I've addressed my, all those instances, Your Honor. They, I've, I've told them all, and that's one of the reasons why I don't talk to them, because if they can't approve, if they can't be happy for me, because I'm happy, then they, I don't need them in my life. Blood, <laughs> blood or not, I mean... So you've pretty much chosen her over your family. Yes, Your Honor. Behind these kids, because I thought I was going to have a family, and I thought I was going to be able to, to build something with her. But the doubts in my mind, I need put to rest. All right. That's what we're here to do. And I'll say the stakes could not be any higher here. Ron, I'd like to go to the results, please. We have two results. There you go, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. The first result is for Cadence. In the case of Thayer v. Thayer, when it comes to 19-month-old Cadence Thayer, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Thayer, you are the father. I told you. One of them. One of the I two. told you. We still need Matthew. Just because one of them is mine doesn't mean I'm going to stay. It's I the first Matthew. time I've seen you smile today. Yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> I have the second result for you. Are you ready? Yes. 
These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Thayer versus Thayer, when it comes to three-year-old Matthew Thayer Jr., it has been determined by this court, Mr. Thayer, you are the father. I told you. Can I give her, her uh, can I give her a hug? Absolutely. I love you, I love you too. I'm at ease now. You look like it. <laughs> yeah. I could see you over there. You were a bundle of nerves. You really didn't know. No. And that, that, that put a big old wedge between us. I think counseling would help that out. We have that for you. I want to say this to you both. You're still married. Yes. So you still have a shot at this. I do want to have a family and I do want to build with her. And this just solidifies the fact that I'm not going to go nowhere. Mr. Hughes. You say you're stuck between your mother and your ex-girlfriend who are in a heated dispute in court today. Ms. McBurth, you petitioned the court for a DNA test to prove your son, Kakitho Hughes, is not the father of Ms. Jackson's two-year-old son, Elijah Jackson. Furthermore, you're suing Ms. Jackson for $1,000 for defamation of character because you claim she posted comments on social media claiming you and your family are deadbeats. Now, Ms. Jackson, you say Ms. McBirth has been poisoning her son by convincing him he's not the biological father of your child. You claim the timing does add up and today's paternity test will prove you right. So, Ms. McBirth, why do you believe your son's not the father? This woman is trouble. She is trouble with a capital T. She, as a matter of fact, I call her the three T's. Trash, trouble, and trifling. That's what she is. The little boy looks nothing like my son any, or any member of my family at all. Can I show it? Can I? Absolutely, ma'am. Okay. What did you bring? Piece of evidence? Jerome, may I yeah. see that, please? This is a photo of your son and the child in question. White. And you say the child looks nothing like your son. That baby, white as snow. There's no way that could be my grandchild or my son's baby. He has no features like none of us. Nobody in my family looked like that. And just by looking at this child, you've determined and said to yourself, He's I not... do not believe that's he, my he, grandchild. He, that, that can't happen. There's no way. There's no way. So... Ms. Jackson, obviously you have a different opinion. Yes, ma'am. So why do you think she's in so much doubt over your child? I have no idea, to be honest. Like, maybe because he is so white? Because he's all the white white. He ain't got no black I... in here. <laughs> Everything I see got a mm -hmm. uh, powder puff on it. I don't see no chocolate nowhere, okay? No, ma'am. Whatever. Let me understand this relationship. So how long have you been in a relationship with Mr. Hughes? for maybe about 15, 18 months. Okay, so a little over a year. Were you in a committed relationship? I thought we was. You did, okay. And was he the only person you were intimate with during that time? Yes, ma'am. Now, she knows she lying. Can I, can she I lying, she lying. Yes, ma'am. This uh, DNA right here has been in our lives. She's never was a girlfriend. You are a vampire. You are just a fly by night. We didn't know anything about you. He's been in a relationship for 10 years. So, Mr. How Hughes the... has. In 10 years. In he got ten two years. babies he got, he's been by another woman. Years, and those years. are my grandchildren. For 10 years. So she was, she, all she basically was for him was a snack cake on the side of his meal. Thank there you. There was nothing more. Thank you. A side chick. And it's, all she has done is she's been trying to put the baby on us. <laughs> Force it. Yeah, you have. Don't sit up and she act like you have it. But the thing about her... She's trying is... to push that baby on... That ain't mine. A... I didn't sleep with her. That child is not ours. When you say she's trying to push the baby on you, what do you mean? She wants me to acknowledge that that, that child is my son's. That's not gonna happen. No, I, I think she's more so obsessed. So, Miss McBurth, okay. tell me about the first time you met Elijah. I seen him at the doctor's office where I was taking his real children to the doctor, and it was a newborn, and I walked past him, and I kind of looked, glanced over there, and I seen this little white baby. I knew it wasn't mine, and I ain't had nothing else to say or do about it since then. I, I, she, she need to get that out of her head. That child is not my son's baby, period. Well, let, let me first 
of course, state the obvious, which I'm hoping you know as well, being African American. You know our children come in all colors, shades, a life she that told is me very he wasn't, white. She told me she didn't know who the father was. She First, she's changed her story up different times about who's the father. At first, when, when I first met the girl, she said, okay, I asked her, I said, okay, this is my brother's baby. She said, yes. I said, I said do you know or do you think? She said, I think. So when we asked her while she was pregnant, we asked her for a DNA test. And what did she say? She was like, oh, okay. She was all for it. At, at that time frame, she was all for it, the DNA test. All of a sudden, when she had the baby, that was out the question because she come up with this lie talking about, oh, well, I can't, he can't do it because he's not here. No, that's a lie. You know exactly where he was at and there was, and he had no, if, he, if she truly wanted him to take a DNA test, she could have had it done, but she didn't want to. Plus, the baby has her ex-husband's last name. That's because that's my last name. Mm -hmm. And so hold on now. If you don't think the child is his, why would she be trying to change the name? Well, We've been didn't... trying to change the no. name a couple weeks ago. Even we couple talked about ago, it. He's two, he's two, when, when two he, years. My, my son ain't said no His name is not even on the birth lying. certificate. Stop lying. Okay. Whose name is on the birth certificate? Do you know? Nobody's. Exactly. Because it's... Because he, went, no, be he was anybody. not there it when be, he was it born. Be that's that's exactly. I could put you, anybody on there, but I didn't. But you had to put another name. You sure should. Until he gets back, that way he could be on the birth certificate. So I was waiting for him. So hold on. And we was ready to put his name on it. I want to understand this. Was he there when you had the baby? No. It was another guy, that's why. There was nobody else there but my mom and my sister. Your mom is in Germany, so you said, when did these you... people come? My caught mom over here in the States. So you just got caught in another lie. I'm sick of all these little hookers trying to say my son is a daddy. I'm okay. sick of it. You I get see. babies dropped off here, dropped off there. I'm sick I'm not of it. But and it stops what today. Because that does. baby is here, not my here, son. Here's the thing that she it does. Is. Here's I'm the sorry. That's a lie. Yes, no, that's it's a not. lie. That's she, a lie. First of all, she's a liar because you just had a wild sex party that got shut down by the police station last week. Last week. No, Hello. Ma yes, you did. Hello. Not yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. There's some hoes in this house. That is not true. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It is true because why is your neighbors, why is your neighbors Neighbors complain about the sex that goes on in your there household. There was no sex yes. going on. How no, you know read the police report. Okay, if you want to some read the police ladies, report. Ladies, ladies, let's get some order. Miss McBirth, I have to ask you, you're very tough on Miss Jackson. Do you have anything to say about your son's behavior? My son has... Yeah, I know exactly what type of person he is. He just as trifling as she is. He's a handsome guy. He's my son. <laughs> and I know what he do. But he still, no matter what he do, he's still gonna be my son. So Please. hold on one second. Just take a look at the monitor. <sighs> when you look at this picture... It make me want to throw up. It seems like your son is kissing the baby. It makes you want to throw up. It makes you want to throw up because Why? it's a lie. Why? For your son to be kissing an innocent child? Because it's not his. It doesn't matter, really, it's if he's showing the child love. It's not his. If your brother is sleeping with her and not using protection, couldn't he possibly be... Elijah's father? You know No, what? not in this case. Like, uh -uh. like the no, old saying goes, no. mama's baby's papa's maybe. Maybe. That's my point. Mr. Hughes, what is your side of this? Please stand, sir. Step up to the podium. Do you believe you are Elijah's father? I just gave him the benefit of the doubt because I'm biracial. My father's white, you know? So he... That child is not my son's, okay? Man. She got men's coming and going in and out of her house. My father's don't a blonde know... hair, blue eyed dude, so. How you know? I'm he just, just gonna say that because, you know, she's gonna freak him after this. Yeah. So now, you wait a minute, you're accusing your my brother <clears throat> of not having enough sense to testify as to his own experience? He told us it wasn't his baby. He just told us that it wasn't his baby. So how could... When did he tell you this? Last night? That. Can I show you this? What that boy that has no features. He has no features of nobody in Jerome, my family. Jerome, pass me Miss McBirth's evidence. There, there, there's please. no features. Nothing. One of the questions was evidence they got the same shows nose. what Miss McBirth explained. <laughs> well, it. He right. has no features of any of us. He don't look like nobody I know. Nothing. Nobody. Yeah. He don't look like nobody uh, I know. All my grandbabies don't have a bridge on their nose. That like little boy got a bridge. My, ch my, my grandchildren all look alike. Every last one. All of them. His, his kids. All his so kids wait, look alike. So wait, we're we're looking at the bridge of the nose. Right. 
And you're saying none of those match? None of those he match. Has, all of his he children doesn't look, look alike. nothing, nothing all, like my son. All, his, all of his Not kids, they look, they look alike. His, his youngest two, his youngest daughter and his son, the people think that they're twins because they look identical. Okay. I heard her, it was about a month ago, I was coming home from work and I heard her tell another guy who was out in, in the parking lot, she told him, she said, Cash, come on with daddy. Come with daddy. I've she him, called... Uh, I've heard him call other dudes daddy, though. Woo! I've heard, uh -huh. heard him say that. Go ahead, Trash. Tell, the truth. tell his... the truth. She makes it hard on herself, basically, because she exactly. throws a lot of doubts in the situation. So, yeah. hold on. Were you having your son Elijah call someone else daddy? No, ma'am. It's when did he sees somebody light-skinned, when my son sees somebody, because he's not, I mean, he's around, but he's not there every day and all day, you know. So when my son sees, like, a tall, light-skinned guy with a head on, he's like, daddy, and I'm like, no, that man daddy. was oh, black. No, that man no. was black as my so mom. You liar. You called. were, wait, wait, wait. So were you telling oh, him to call daddy. someone else well, daddy, or you were? He knows when he sees him, he, he knows, oh, daddy, he knows no, that's his daddy. That's not what you no. said. What you said, Elijah. Elijah, come on, let's go with daddy. This no. is your exact words. Yes. You Mr. Hughes, like, yeah. Mr. Hughes, have you ever heard Elijah call somebody yes, else a daddy? A few times. Wow. You have? Yes, ma'am. Mm. When? Mm -mm. Uh, she was with, just like the last guy she was with, I heard him call him daddy. He's nowhere near my complexion. You know, he don't wear hats either. He's, he looks Woo. dirty for real. Tell the truth, son. But, uh, Tell the truth. She throws a lot of deaths in the situation, you know what I'm saying? And I knew she was with another biracial dude before she was with me. Like so. three months before, and I was five weeks pregnant uh -huh. when uh, we found out I was pregnant. Yeah, you get around, don't you? Do you know how many times a girl has said, This is my son's child, this one, this one? I, I, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm sick of it. First of all, she's I'm talking about previous all people. All these babies. He got okay, hold big on, one no, hold on. Take care. Hold on, stop talking, because finally, Miss McBirth is speaking the real truth of what she's really frustrated about. I've, I've been through hell. Every time I look around, it's a baby here, it's a baby there, and I'm the one stuck helping, got to feed them, take care of the clothes, and, and, and keep them while the mom and daddy either go to work or run the street. I'm sick of it. I'm done. I'm done. So do you understand what your mother is saying, Mr. Hughes? Yes, ma'am. Because her level of frustration and anger and resentment that has allowed her and your sister to come into this courtroom and really speak terribly about an innocent child. I'm glad I'm in this chair, because I get to see the big picture. The big picture of this is, she's not sick of the baby, she's sick of you. Because you running around here... No. no. Right. You running around here, you having babies. She just said it. I don't and know what at they the end about of her. the day, it falls on her. The weight falls on her. The responsibility falls on her. I don't sleep around like that. Well, I don't know how many kids <laughs> you got. I don't know, but she yeah, just said to me, she's got a lot of, you got kids and she's just tired. Do you understand what your mother is saying, Mr. Hughes? Yes, ma'am. So I'm gonna go to these results in just a moment, but I need to understand. Ms. McBirth, you say Ms. Jackson defamed you. Yeah, she did. She, she going around town. That's your lawsuit, $1,000. Right. She defamed you. Please explain to this court. She's going how around you... telling everybody, well, we're it's dead beats. We don't do nothing for the baby. How am I supposed to do something for a child that I don't know is mine? But Other what girls. proof did you bring to court that what these proof? statements occurred? I, I, what proof? If I had my phone, I'd pull up the Facebook, but she posted on Facebook. That's what we need. Yeah, I want we to need that. proof. You did. She defamed you. You never said anything disrespectful about you guys, and I never will because I First have no you respect you in that. First of all, you on the five, I need you on the three. For you guys, as his parent, ladies, you know, we me and his girlfriend. Let's get some control, ladies. This is just going way off the deep end, and it doesn't serve Elijah at all. She just I don't have proof of the false statements, she and I don't have proof of inner, any injury that was caused, and for that reason, I have to dismiss your claim. That's fine. Now, I'm ready for the results. <laughs> Jerome, let's get to the results. Come on. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics. They read as follows. In the case of McBirth, Terrell v. Jackson, pertaining to two-year-old Elijah Jackson. Pertaining to two-year-old Elijah Jackson.
and whether Mr. Hughes is the father. Mr. Hughes, you are Elijah's father. No! It's Mr. Hughes's son. And everything you're saying right now, believe me, and I say this, I say this earnestly, you will regret one day. I hope I do. No, no, no. I hope you I do. Will. Because you, you will. Because you something you've never had. You will. You, you, can't you will. You've never had. It's not becoming and it's not necessary. You're right. The baby didn't walk the... into this world on You're his right. own, talking about people's bridge, no bridge, hair, no hair. Irrelevant evidence when the truth is right here in this lab report. Mm. Mm -mm. Ms. Barrett, you stand before the court six months pregnant, not knowing who fathered your baby. During the period of conception, you say you slept with two men multiple times, including the defendant, Mr. Mullinax. Now, furthermore, you're asking the court to award you $779 for items you've purchased to prepare for the baby's arrival. You say you believe Mr. Mullinax is also responsible for these expenses because he may be the father. Mr. Mullinex, you say you refuse to pay anything for an unborn child that isn't yours. Yes, Your Honor. You deny fraternity and claim Ms. Barrett had sex with you, her ex-boyfriend, and several other men. <laughs> yes, ma'am. All during the period of conception. Yes. So, Ms. Barrett, please tell the court, how did you end up in this situation? Um, over a three-month period, I was sleeping with two different guys, my ex-boyfriend and Mr. Mullinex. Within, like, three months, I slept with them, both of them, about 50 to 60 times. 50 to 60? Oh. Yes. 50 to 60 times each? No, I was sleeping with Mr. Molinax um, Thursday through Monday and sleeping with my ex-boyfriend roughly Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> On a weekly schedule? Yes. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, before I even get to that, take me back. How did you meet? I met Mr. Molinax um, through my ex-boyfriend. Um, his wife, his current wife, which he's still married to, is... Oh! <laughs> is, an, is my ex-boyfriend's family member. And this is the ex-boyfriend you were sleeping with? Yes. Okay, keep going. He was still with his wife at the time. Whenever we were going out, we were doing double dates. That's a lie. And, um... <laughs> He was coming up to me on the double dates at bars and the tanning salon and different places that we were together, um, asking me if he left his wife, would I be with him, and um, that he want, him and his wife were having trouble and that he wanted to be with me instead I of his never, wife. I've never said any of that stuff. What happened? I mean, tell me. When, I, when, when, I, first met, when I first met her, she's, she was with my wife, one of my wife's family members, which I'm going through a divorce now with her. And I walked in, and he introduced me to her, and I could tell from the first statement she made that she was a complete airhead. So he took me in the back bedroom. Wait a minute. <laughs> You're talking about Ms. Barrett? Yes, ma'am. How did this progress, and you are married? Well, my, me and my wife separated, and after we separated, me and that's when I began my relationship with her. Okay. I went over to her house. The first time I went over there, within 20 minutes, we were in the bedroom. Oh. Okay. So, you had sex right away? Yes. The first time I actually met her, you know, the guy she was dating showed me a bunch of pictures of naked pictures she had sent him and in the phone. that's the way that he got They had been seeing each other, you know, for only maybe two to three days at that time, so I figured if it was easy for him, it'd be easy for me. Oh! So, you tried it? Yes, ma'am. Miss Barrett, did you sleep with the man within 20 minutes? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, but the way he... The Why? way that he, um... I just took Mr. Molinax as being a very truthful and honest person and that he wouldn't, you know, lie to me and deceive me and do me wrong, which he has now. And when because you first of, because found of out you were pregnant, me. who did you say was the father? Mr. Molinax. You just said that immediately? Yeah. 
And why is that? Because you knew it was a distinct possibility that your ex-boyfriend could be the father as well. Mm -hmm. Because he was incarcerated, so I didn't even want to think about that option, really. Mr. So Mullinex. was it really about you being convinced Mr. Mullinex was the father or the fact that you just wanted him to be the father because he was available to help you take care of the baby? Pretty much because he was available. Listen, because Your Honor, she sent me a text and said she was pregnant. The next day, she said she had a miscarriage, and then two days later, she was pregnant that is again. That's a lie. So I I've had, never I've had said doubts that. Yes, the whole you did. Time. You sent the text. When her and I first got no. together, I saw multiple text messages in her phone from other guys talking about when are you going to let me get another one of those world famous. Her reputation around the city was that she was good at things like that. I mean, that's pretty much what led so me to I believe that it'd be easy. I, I need you to use respectful language in the courtroom, uh, but Ms. Barrett, I apologize. were you getting text messages from multiple men asking you for sexual favors and encounters? We'll put no, it like that. No, yes, it was not. Was. It was not sexual encounters. I was getting multiple messages from men and stuff like that, but they were all my friends and stuff. Okay. So, Mr. Mullinex, when she told you she was pregnant, what was your reaction? I automatically assumed it wasn't mine because I knew I wasn't the only man she was sleeping with. But you knew you could be a possibility, a right? A possibility, yes, ma'am. The ratio just goes to show, you know, that more than likely, I'm not the father. The ratio? Yeah, I mean, compared you to her sleeping... How many guys? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, ma'am, kind of, because, I mean, if you're sleeping with so many people, how can you tell who the baby's daddy is just by, you know, just your ultimate But guess. there were two, she says, so that's math of 50-50, which is a great probability. I understand that, but I really don't believe it's my kid. Oh, my goodness. So, did you just sleep together that one time? I don't think so, because Miss Baird had outlined the calendar. <laughs> oh. Yes, yes, Your Honor. I have the calendar here. Uh, Jerome. <laughs> Ms. Bear, oh. this is the most symmetrical <laughs> yes. color block calendar I have ever seen in this courtroom. If you look at that calendar, you'll see, I mean, it's it's clear. Me, me, him, 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 me, me, him, him, him. There's no telling whose baby that is. She couldn't get off her back long enough to decide who she wanted her baby's daddy to be. <laughs> Mr. Mullinex, even though it may be a painful truth, let's be respectful in the courtroom. Yes, ma'am. There's no way to deny this is way too much sex for a young girl to be having with two different men, Mr. <laughs> Barry. And you're upset. Now, what are your emotions? You feel what? Just a month ago, he was telling me that we were going to be together and that we were going to be a family. And just last week, we just had sex last week. And he was telling me that he wanted to be a well, family. No, Mullinex? that's not true. Yes. A month ago, I went to her house. I got drunk. I made a mistake. I went over there. And yeah, we ended up having sex. No. But, I mean, I told her what she wanted to hear just to get what I wanted, but I do not so want to be So, wait a minute. Her. That means what she's saying is true. You were just selling dream saying we're gonna be together yes, yes, and he's done that the whole entire time for the last like six months he's done that why would you do that to her I mean really there's no explanation for it besides the fact that I mean it's just easy to go to to get you know what I need all right a man will say about anything to get you in the bed you understand yes. and look this calendar is way too full why is it the exact same days each week and then the weekend? Mr. Mullinax had a job at the time, so therefore he would come over on the weekends and leave on Monday nights. So he do, he wasn't there during the week most of the time. So he's then at you'd work. be with your my boyfriend. And where would your boyfriend think you were on the weekends? He wasn't around. He was just out hanging out with his friends and stuff like that. And this went on for an entire month. Yeah. So ultimately, when you looked at the calendar during the week of conception, you actually did sleep with Mr. Mullinex and your ex-boyfriend in that week, so you truly don't know, just I, like I have, he said. Yeah, I have no clue. Today's the first day he's ever admitted that there's even a possibility. A couple weeks ago, I found out that I'm having a little boy. I don't want to raise this little boy by myself. I don't want it to not have a father. You need to find wife. out who his daddy is, then. And so that's why I'm here today, is to find out who the father did is. Did you grow up with a father? Yes, I did. And so you know how important that is. Right, yes. And I, and I want that for my son. Mr. Mullinax, I'm ready to hear from your witness. Ma'am, please stand. State your name. Paige Huffman. You're his girlfriend? Yes. Okay, now why is it you instantly started crying when she stood up? She's just 
a trouble. Like, she's just trouble. And he's in her saying he loves her and stuff. She's really just another notch in his belt. Like, she's nothing. She's not bad. <laughs> well, I mean, special. look, you don't know, you know what goes on between our relationship. I know and what I, he had, tells I, had, me. I had done I know what he tells and me. And you said for the past you, six months, you, I don't you care what know. you're saying. You need to let me speak for a second. Okay, and you know the poor well, fact he's been over the house. house. Do you not? Know? Okay, let's get some order. I'll I'm trying to understand, Miss Hoffman. So, what do you know about the situation? What do you have to add? Ms. Hoffman, so what do you know about the um, situation? Yeah. What do you she have to add? She called and asked to speak with Mr. Mullinex, and I put it on speakerphone and let her speak with him. Okay. Well, she said that might not be his baby, that, you know, she still wanted his support. And, you know, she needed closure for why he didn't want to be with her. So, Ms. Hoffman, you do understand and you realize Mr. Mullinex has admitted to you that he has slept with her, he said, about a month ago, she said last week. Yes, ma'am. How long have you all been together? That's the first I heard about last week because I asked her myself. But did you, you ask him? You called yeah, him. I asked him. Obsessed him. Every, I asked him daily. But like, just like she whenever he cheated last month, month whenever he went and slept with her, then of course he's going to deny it. Let's calm down for a second. Mr. Mullinax, you got real quiet on me. Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> What exactly is going on here? Did you, in fact, sleep with Miss Barrett a week ago? No, we did not have sex a week ago. It's been a month ago, and I was drunk when it happened. Oh. I mean, that's a mistake I made and when I was drinking. You know, I know there's person. no excuse for what I did. I mean, the truth comes out no matter what. But the fact of the matter is, I do not want to be with her. I told her what she wanted to do. And Miss Barrett, moment. are you saying that he did tell you that you all were going to be together? Yes, he did. He said that we were going to be a family and that he wanted a fresh start. <laughs> Ultimately, you've gone through and you are still going through this pregnancy all alone. Yes, I am. I went to go get an ultrasound and everything by myself and all. Like, he's, I mean, he says he's going to be there. Why would I and go to an ultrasound when well, I don't even think it's my baby? Believe me, I understand your doubt. Yeah. I'm not saying I don't understand it. <laughs> Thank you. But wouldn't it just behoove you to play a part of some sort just in case it is until you found out? All that's going to do is ruin my relationship that I'm in now. If it's not mine, I want her out of my life. I don't want to have to deal with her for 18 years, so I'm really hoping this comes back where it's not my kid. Mm. Mm -mm. You know, Ms. Barrett, it really gets under my skin when I see young women like you that have literally given yourself away. You have given yourself away. And now, you stand at this podium by yourself, going to doctor's appointments by yourself, after you done gave away a month's worth of days and nights with two men that are not, will not, or cannot be a part of it and share it with you. And I hope this is a learning lesson for you. Now, you also have come to court saying that you are petitioning the court for $779 because you've had to purchase all the items on your own to prepare for the baby. Yes, I currently cannot work, and my family, both, my sister and my mother both have been purchasing items and stuff for the baby, which I'm having to pay them back once. So basically what it is, you're because taking a loan. They're buying they're you buying the things, things, and you've agreed to pay them back right. at a later date. Yes. So your suit is for $779. I do not feel like I should have to pay for a baby that I don't even know if it's mine. You're not going to be responsible for this amount unless this child is determined to be your biological child, and that's just it. I understand that. I have photos of everything. That has been purchased. Uh -huh. Jerome, will and you please hand me that? Everything's listed in the amount. It's a funny thing. I was just over there a week ago, and I didn't see anything laying around that looked brand new. You're saying that she was over there? I wanted to talk to her and decide what we were going to do if this was my child. So wait a minute. After an entire month of Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, and Mondays, and last month's slip up, suddenly now last week you went over there and just went over there to talk. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I find that hard to believe. You said you were intimate with this girl 20 minutes after you met her. So obviously you all don't do a lot of talking, and that's no. exactly what she's saying. I no. know, that's the truth. That's we're the way it did happen in the beginning, but not last week. No, we just get drunk and have fun and have sex, and let's be real about it, Dustin. <laughs>
That's what's belly. happened for the past six months, but it didn't happen last week. For the week. past six okay. months. Well, when we were, when we were together. I'm not it's talking about. Yeah. No, 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 no. We hear a murmur from the choir. That is not. Stand up for a minute, Miss Hoffman. Are some facts becoming evident to you that you didn't mm -hmm. know? I mean, you know, I already know that there's a uh, there's a possibility. You know, I mean, I love him. Or otherwise, I wouldn't have gave him another chance. And you keep on smirking, and I don't like it. I know that she does not want him to be with me. Or otherwise, she I wouldn't have said. She wouldn't have told me if they was just like friends, just wanting to have a good time. Whenever I called, she wouldn't have been like, yes, yes, we did, and try and tell me Why? everything because that I'm a she woman? can Ms. Hoffman, to get us to separate. Now, Ms. I understand. I understand that that's my I'm not gonna lie. to stay with them after that happened. But if this is his baby, you know, it might ruin our relationship because I can't deal with her. You've already told me that. Okay. Miss Huffman, you can take yeah, a seat and uh, we can go to the results. I think it's time. There you go, Judge. These results may, in fact, be emotional. And so, Miss Barrett, you're more than welcome to take a seat. Okay. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. When it comes to the paternity of Sasha Barrett's unborn child, Mr. Mullinax, you are the father. <laughs> Boy, if you don't get over there and at least see if she's okay and she's carrying your child over there crying, step over there. Oh, hey. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about it. You hear me? And I'm gonna help you take care of this baby. Now, yes, she's been by herself. She done stood up here by herself. She has admitted her secrets, her shame, and basically told more than most women in this world would ever admit to. In the name of finding out who her child's father is. So now, Mr. Mullinex, she came to this courtroom saying there was $779 worth of items purchased for the baby, which means that you are responsible for half of that $389.50. I understand. And now that I know this is my child, I'm going to do what I have to do and take care of my responsibilities. And listen, Ms. Barrett, don't you be a fool and lay down with this man based upon some promise that he's going to be there for the baby, because he can be there for the baby, but that doesn't mean he's going to be with you. Are we clear? Court is adjourned.